Hey everyone, this is John Garrett from hypertransitory.com and today I'm going to be going over uh, a few of the, the basics and features I use uh, to, to letter a comic book uh, using Adobe Illustrator. And today's comic is, uh, is going to be one called Ragnarok Incorporated, Embrace Oblivion. So hopefully uh, if this is of interest to you, then, uh, then you'll go ahead and, and view and see some of the, uh, the tricks I use, like the character styles and the graphic styles, plus uh, some of the 3D text um, you know, filter uh, you know, features and effects I can use too. And there's also a write-up to this one on my site, so if you're viewing it on YouTube, check the description and I'll have it in there. And if you're on my site, then hopefully you read through the, uh, the entire post and let me know what you thought. Anyway, thanks for viewing and let's get right into it. All right, guys, let's take a look at these character styles and graphic styles. As you can see, in this file, I've got uh, quite a few different types of fonts and uh, balloons here. So this is my master style template for this particular comic project of uh, the Ragnarok. And uh, I do this for, for all comic projects that I'm doing. And in Illustrator, this is kind of the best workaround you've got for synchronizing and maintaining all your styles. Now, if I was doing this in InDesign, I can have multi-pages in one file, and it's really not a big deal. Uh, all my styles are right there. So no matter which page I'm on, I can always get the same style. Well, in Illustrator, every page is a different file, um, and I, I do not use the uh, multiple artboard feature, just in case anyone's wondering. So, so uh, that's not an option for me. So I do it with every page as a separate file, but I need to always keep these styles the same. So I always have this one file that has all the different um, styles and, and balloons that I need. So since they already exist, I mean, that's fine. Um, if I need to take something here and, and I can turn it into another type of a style fairly easily by clicking on that and it changes, that one's white. So that's easy to do once I've got the style created, but um, if I need to make that style, then I'll have to start, you know, start from scratch with some default text, such as I've got here. So let's take a look here. So this is pretty much what text looks like when I just paste it right in. You can see it's Myriad Pro. I'm going to change it to something else. Let's see. Uh, let's change it to this. And then to change that, all right. What if I want to make this a style? So you can see it's kind of a, this plus sign is here on normal character style in my character styles palette. That means I've changed from the default or changed from whatever this standard is. But I'm going to make a new one. And when I click this new style button, whatever's selected is going to become the new style. As you can see, it's added character style one. It hasn't selected it for me yet, though. So I click on it, and um, I can name it. I can go through all my formats and do everything that I want to do in here. If necessary, I can assign colors. I'll just leave it alone for now. So that's my new style. And let's just say I take this. Now you can see that it becomes that new style. And the same thing goes for these balloons. So here I've got, this is Labyrinth Thought Balloon. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another one. All right, so that's default black and white. I'm going to make it the same as this. I can even go through and change it to any one of these styles that I need at the time. So you can see how much quicker that is than, than setting that up over and over again each time I need to make a box or a balloon. It could be very annoying. So that's why I keep this, this file here. I'll just save this. Now, the thing is, whenever I'm working another another file, I'm going to need to load these styles each time. 
which it, it does get a little um, tedious, but it's better than setting up each one of these over and over again. So I'm going to jump over here. Okay, so here's a page that, uh, as you can see, is looking kind of bad right now. And that's because it has none of the styles applied to it. Um, what I'll do is I'll get the script and then I will just start pasting in wherever this stuff is supposed to go. You know, page six, panel one, I'll just start pasting it in. And this is how it comes in initially without any styling applied to it. So I want to get my styles so I can apply them. And the thing is, I'll need to load the styles from my template file, which you can see here. All right, so I got to get these in here. Now, luckily, I can go to my character styles. I'll start there. And I'll just say load character styles. And it's going to ask me, where are you going to get those styles from? And, and it's going to be my Ragnarok style template. Here they all are. So that's very cool. Even the new style I created earlier is in there. And then when I go to my graphic styles, it's a little bit of a different procedure, but the, uh, you know, the gist of it is the same. I'll go off the edge of my graphic style uh, palette, open style library, and I'll go to get this Ragnarok style template. Or if you don't have it in here already, just go to other library, go find it and load it up. So it's going to give me the separate palette, which is fine. But really, I'd like them to be in here. Like if I start applying these all over this page, everything that I apply is going to be added over here in the graphic styles. But if I just want the whole, you know, shebang in there, I'll just go select these and I'll literally say add to graphic styles. So we should be good to go. And added a separate one in there. Then I don't need that one anymore. I've got everything I need here. But I need to go through here and apply these. So what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go to my layers palette. And as you can see, I've got balloons on one layer. I've got text on one layer. Art is on one layer. So I think what I'm going to do first is do my balloons in the boxes. So I'm going to lock my text so I don't end up selecting that. That's what's great about working with these layers in Illustrator. So let's get that out of the way. And, you know, I kind of know by now which, which style goes where. So I'm going to go ahead and apply those. Let's do that. Let's select all of these. And I'm going to change those to the czar style. You can see they rounded a little bit there. And then these other ones are going to get turned into the John Inner monologue style. Let's click on that. All right, so those are shaping up. Down here, I've got some dialogue balloons. And of course, they're going to be turned into dialogue balloon. Added some extra points there. Let me undo that. As you can see, I kind of have some points going on there, which you couldn't do in Photoshop without a lot of extra hassle. All right, so I got my balloons looking fine. Now it's time to go and shape up this text. Let's get back here. So let's pick all the czar stuff. And let's kind of zoom up on that so you can see the change. Czar style. All right, now I need to get John's inner monologue style. Zoom up on there. Lazarus inner monologue. All right, looking a lot better. Now we just got to get this stuff down here and change it to the regular dialogue balloon. All right. Looks a lot better really quickly. <laughs> so I, with, without the character styles and the, and the graphic styles, I would have to go to each one of these and, and set those up. Or I could possibly use the, uh, the eyedropper tool or cut and paste. But I think this is a lot more efficient. Um, and so if you end up doing this, I would, I would really advise you to use your graphic styles and your character styles the best that you can to, uh, to take some of the burden off you. Okay, uh, I just want to show you some of the, uh, the techniques that are, are used for me to um, make some of the sound effects and other, uh, you know, different styles of text and why it's a little better to do in Illustrator than, than in Photoshop. And uh, as you can see here on this page, we got, we got one sound effect here and I've already 
applied a bunch of styles to this as you can see but what's important here is this is still live editable text even though I've done a bunch of crap to it I can still go in here add in a bunch more O's and whatever now if I did this in Photoshop before I applied the styles to it and, and really manipulate it I have to rasterize that or turn it into a picture then I can't really go back and edit it unless I made a copy of it beforehand and made another layer and it's really kind of inefficient to do it that way so that's why I prefer to do this stuff in Illustrator and um, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through I'm gonna copy this and if you saw when I moved that it didn't look a lot different you know this is what it really is and you know this is what it's showing without all the styles applied so I'm gonna go to my appearance palette that's something um, a really powerful area where I can kinda of take off a lot of these styles that I've done I'll even take off the drop shadow for now and alright let's say I want to do something different let's get that out of the way alright that's looking good but I can even throw a little perspective on this thing so I'm gonna to go to my effects 3d let's do a rotate alright you can kinda of see an approximation of what's gonna happen I usually like to start this back at the front and then I don't need that but um, I'm gonna turn it like this let's do a preview so that's interesting but let me throw some perspective on there now it really is starting to kind of come alive let's monkey around with that yeah not bad alright that's what I got I can move it around you can see as I'm moving it this is what it really looks like but I've got style applied to it so I'm actually going to increase that and yeah maybe that yellow is fine yeah let's try that and then I'm gonna go I'll throw a drop shadow on it just so we can I don't think I like that blur on it let's take it down a little bit actually I'm gonna make it more normal all right so I've got perspective going on there I got a drop shadow this is still live I can still edit this if I want and I'm gonna do even something more to this I'm gonna go to my effects warp let's do an arc on this thing let's just see what that looks like whoa a bit too much let's go to 15 there it's it's really a lot more exciting which I could probably take this down I'm a little bit outside of the margins there of safety yeah not bad not bad guys so I mean that's just one of the things you can do if you check out my appearance palette I select it first but it's showing me all uh, styles I've got applied to it I can delete all of these and um, you know go back to zero if I want to and if I need to change this to something else you know I can do that fairly easily you know without having to resort to going back to an old copy that I made or something that's why it's a lot better to do these in Illustrator because you've got so many more options um, that make things more efficient for you and even though I've kind of been one who's kind of been down on Illustrator's 3D 3D capabilities before I mean it's not really meant to be a, a full-fledged 3D package but for this sort of work the 3D options that it has are really perfect <laughs> they're really all you need so uh, I would I would definitely recommend that uh, you take advantage of this to kind of make the sound effects and make some of the uh, 
you know, the character who's screaming or yelling or whatever, even more exciting than just having a, a straight on text and, and the regular font size and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know what? I think uh, John Lazarus down here, he should probably be saying something, I would think. So let's let's make him uh, have something to say about his predicament here. I'm trying to think of something interesting, but I cannot. So I don't know if you guys ever saw Seinfeld or not. <laughs> I don't know if you saw Seinfeld. It was the episode where uh, I guess Woody Allen had come to town to make a movie. And so Kramer ended up becoming some kind of an extra with a line. And the, and the line was, these pretzels are making me thirsty. And George felt that he should have gotten the, the line and the entire show. He just kept on saying the line in different inflections and different, <laughs> different voices. But uh, I guess you had to be there. Oh, well. It was funny. I, I, I like that show. <laughs> anyway, so let's have Lazarus have something to say here. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but this one, I, I made what's called area type, which is where I made a box. Normally, I'll make a box. This one is called, this one is point type because, you know, it just starts with a point. Or actually, it's in the center there, but uh, this one has a box. This one doesn't. Let's get in there. So I think this one will be fine to be his regular dialogue. Yeah, wow, that's small. Okay, so let's get in there. Now I got to make a balloon for him. So let's go ahead and make him one. And I'm going to turn that into, using my graphic styles, I'm going to turn that into a regular dialogue balloon. Now I got to send it to the back. So now we can see he's muttering about these pretzels. Let's shrink that in there. All right. Now I gotta make this. Uh, <laughs> I gotta make this point to him, so he he's saying it. The way I like to do is take the pen tool. There's other ways you can do this, but I like to do it this way. I'll take this pen tool and I'll just literally make a make a triangle. And then I gotta combine these together. A lot of people don't use Pathfinder anymore, but I've, you know, I always ended up using it. And whatever's on top, you know, it brings it to the top level. That's why it went in front of, of the text. And if we look closely, you can see I got my point going on there, uh, which I complained about in the write-up to this, that you couldn't really, in Photoshop, you couldn't really get those points. It usually rounded out the edge of all the strokes. So what I want to do is... Uh, We'll have him be a little bit more upset about the uh, the pretzels when it's time to make this one. So I think, let's see what kind of character style. I got my regular dialogue style. I might turn this into something else. What was that other font I used before? Let's, uh, actually I'm gonna turn that back to normal, I think. I'm gonna get something else. Let's try this one. All right, he's he's upset. Let's put some English on this thing. And I think the thing to do here is preview it way too far away. Yeah. Yeah. These pretzels are making me thirsty. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Forgive me. <laughs> That's one of the all-time memorable lines. Are making me thirsty. All right, maybe we should drop a balloon back here. And what I'm gonna do? Get those swatches out of the way. I got graphic styles here. I mean, there's my regular balloon. 
Maybe I'll turn it into this. If I put a balloon behind him, see now maybe I can't go for this. I can't go for this uh, red drop shadow anymore. Appearance palette. Let's turn it black. And let's get rid of the blur. I don't know, guys. I think I may dump the drop shadow on this one. Let's get rid of that. And instead, I'm going to do a stroke on this. I think that's more legible. So what I'm going to do, back to my appearance, I'm going to turn this back to regular. And I'm going to turn my font. Let's get this. That'll do good enough, I suppose. Yeah, he's angry about this. He's pissed. Damn pretzels. Alright, so now, as you know, he actually has to be speaking this, so... I'm going to make my triangle. I'll put it back here. Let's put those together. But where's my point? Come on, man. That's controlled here in my stroke. And it's this uh, this limit deal here. There we go. Really, he took one bump up. Let's get that out of his face. Yeah. These pretzels are making me thirsty. John Lazarus. So you don't want to mess with him in that regard. So you can tell on the next page, someone's going to have to pay for this. But uh, actually, now that I think about it, I covered up part of this guy in this panel. That's not going to work out. Let's see if I can flip this. Let's, uh, oh. Let's do a... Reflect? No? Eh. Somewhat. See, this blue line here is, I can't really go too far outside of that, at least not with my text. Actually, I think that might work. But the text itself is not out there. And I'm going to change this so. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're good to go. Pretzels are making me thirsty. All right. That should do it for this one, guys. So thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully this helps out in your own comic endeavors. See you guys next time.